Hello and welcome back to my channel. Last week we talked about logos and how you can create one for your publishing business for free using Canva. If you haven't checked out that video yet, then go ahead and take a look at that one first. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to convert that logo that you created in Canva into an editable vector file. What that is going to do is allow you to remove the background from that pesky JPEG that will then allow you to place that logo onto colored backgrounds because as you learned in the last video, a JPEG when it exports takes that white background along with it for the ride, which is going to make it look really awkward if you plop that JPEG onto the colored background of your book cover. So today we're gonna look a little, at a little bit of a workaround, how you can download that actually as a PDF rather than a JPEG and then import that PDF into a vector editing program and convert it to either an EPS file or an SVG file, which are both vector-based files. Now I'm gonna be showing you how to do this in Illustrator as well as Affinity Publisher. And I just wanna point out that Affinity Designer is actually the vector editing software that Affinity has created. I don't have that because I use the Adobe suite, but I do have Affinity Publisher and they make it pretty easy to do some basic vector editing from within that program. So what I'm gonna show you within Publisher is act actually going to be quite similar, if not the exact same of what you would do if you were using Designer, which is the actual vector editing program that Affinity has created. Now, I just wanna quickly mention this isn't always going to be a perfect process, which you will see when I open up the file, but I offer a couple of workarounds for you that should get the ball rolling and you should in the end end up with an editable vector-based file. So let's flip the screen and take a look. All right, so here's our logo that we created in the last video. Now I'm going to go back to download, but instead of doing this as a JPEG like I did last time, I'm going to download it as a high quality PDF print. Now I don't need the crop marks and bleed, so I'm going to go ahead and hit download. Now the next thing I'm going to do is open up that file in my vector editing software. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first one is going to be within Adobe Illustrator, and then I'm going to show you how to do it in Affinity Publisher. Now a quick note here, Affinity Designer is Affinity's vector editing software. I don't have that, I only have Publisher, but the way I'm going to show you in Publisher is going to be the way that you do it in Designer as well. Now that is another wonderful thing about Affinity Publisher is that you can actually edit vectors within that program as well. All right, so I'm just gonna choose the file straight from my downloads folder and I'm going to open it with Adobe Illustrator. If you want, you can open up your program first and then place the file, it really doesn't matter. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do when you're editing a PDF in a vector software, most likely is you're going to have to release what's called a clipping mask. I'm not gonna worry about getting into what that is, <laughs> but basically you're going to go to object, clipping mask, release. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to make all of the elements within your logo file editable. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this white background. I'm just going to select it and delete. Now there may be a couple of these boxes that you're going to have to get rid of. The best way to figure out if you've gotten rid of them all in Illustrator is to go to View Outline. So on a Mac, the shortcut is Apple Y. On Windows, that's going to be Control Y. Now I can see there's still a box around this leaf that we're going to want to get rid of. So I'm going to click it. And again, you can go to Object, Clipping Mask, Release, or you can do a right click like I've just done and just select Release Clipping Mask. Now I'll be able to just select the rectangle and get rid of it. All right, so everything else looks normal. I'm going to hit Command Y to go back to my regular view, or you can go back to the menu and select Overprint Preview. Now the step we want to take here to actually turn this into an editable vector file is we've got to convert the letters to vectors. Now, what I'm seeing right here is that that's already been done, but I can see down here that these are still letters. I can actually select that and I could type in a different letter if I want. Now, in order to vectorize these letters, which is what we want to do to create our vector file, is select, 
And then we'll go to Type, Create Outlines. That is going to turn our text into a vector. And there's nothing we need to do to the leaf that's already a vector. The only thing you're really watching for is that there's no text left. The text has got to be vectorized, and that's what we just did. So now that we've made these changes, we're ready to export this file as an EPS. Now one thing I like to do is just select everything here, then I will go to Object, Artboards, and Fit to Selected Art. All that's really going to do is ensure that when I place this file in my book later, there's not going to be a big giant box around it. The box is just going to be around the actual elements of the logo. Once I've done that, I will go to File, Save As. My name doesn't actually correspond to what the logo says anymore, but we won't worry about that. And then I will choose Illustrator EPS. Then you'll hit save and you're going to get this dialog box come up. You don't really need to worry about anything here. The main thing I would do is just make sure you've got transparent selected and then you'll go ahead and click OK. Now once you've done that, you will have an EPS file that you're going to be able to place directly into your book file. So again, this can go on your copyright page next to your copyright information or any contact details that you might want to be sharing. This can also be placed over top of a colored background if you want to put this on the back of your book. Now you can keep it black and gray like this, or since you can use color on your cover, you might want to change the color of this depending on the colored background of your book. Now you can create a new EPS file every time you want to create a different colored logo to place on the cover of your book, or the lazy way is to just open up the file, make your colored changes, copy it from this file, and then go ahead to your desktop publishing software and just paste it right in. That works as well. If you're working within a program that only accepts SVG files, then that's no problem. You can still do what you need to do here in Illustrator, and then you can go to File, Save As, and you will choose SVG format. All right, now let's take a look how we're going to do this in Affinity Publisher. So again, I'm just going to right click on my PDF and I'm going to open with Affinity Publisher, or if you've got Affinity Designer, which would really be the place to edit vectors if you've got it. But as I said, I work primarily with Adobe products, but I know a lot of you do work with Affinity, so I've got Publisher. So I just wanted to show you here. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice, and this isn't going to be the case with all of them, but for some of these, if you don't have the font, things aren't going to look quite right. Now you can already see in the preview here that the back to nature font is not looking the way it's supposed to. We'll get back to that in a second. First, just make sure you're on 300 DPI, color space CMYK, and you can go ahead and click group lines of text into text frames. Now it's telling us right here that we've got this missing font and it's telling us that it's being replaced with this other much less appealing font. Now you can just either go ahead and choose a different font in here if you wanna see what any of them look like. You can go ahead and click the font and you can see that there's still a bit of formatting, um, a few formatting issues going on. We'll get to that in a sec. But what you can do is head back over to Canva and take a look at the font that they used. So, so this is playlist script. Now, if this is a free font available for download, you can go ahead and do a Google search, which is what I did. And I was able to find playlist script on this font site. I then went ahead and downloaded it and I installed it. So I should be able to scroll through my list of fonts now, click on playlist, and I can go ahead and click open. All right, now we've got our missing font. Now, obviously, if Canva has used a font that isn't free, you're going to have to decide whether or not you want to pay for that font. Some fonts can be quite pricey, so you might not be willing to do that. In that case, you can either just use the JPEG that you downloaded, keeping in mind that you're probably not going to be able to use it effectively on the colored background of your book cover, and you can just place it inside your book next to your copyright information or you can go ahead and just choose a different font, something similar. You're just going to select your text box, and then you're going to go to Layer, Convert to Curves. You can also do that just by right-clicking, and again, you'll just get 
convert to curves. Now again, you want to make sure you're getting rid of any of these white backgrounds, so just try and find the box and delete it. Now if you're using Designer, you should be able to go to View and hit Outline Mode. Please let me know if I'm wrong on that one, because again, I'm working in Publisher here, not Designer. Since I'm in Publisher, I'm just going to see if I can select any other boxes here and just get rid of them. One thing you can do if you're not really sure if you've gotten rid of all the white backgrounds is just drag out a colored box over the entire thing. You can go up here to the Arrange Tools and you can move it to the back. And if there were any white background elements, you would see it against the yellow background. I don't see anything, so I'll just select that yellow box, get rid of it, and now I'm ready to export. So I'll go to File Export, and you've got a couple options here. Just like within Illustrator, you can choose an EPS format. You're just going to have to make sure that whatever program you are creating your covers in accepts EPS files. If not, you can choose SVG. Make sure you've got whole document selected, and then you'll hit export. For SVG, you can go ahead and click 300, even though it is saying right here, nothing's going to be rasterized. You can click export text as curves for font independence. We've already converted our text to curves, but just in case you've got some that haven't been converted yet, you can click that. Again, make sure we're on whole document, and then you'll hit export. Once you've done that, you will have your EPS or SVG file, which you will then be able to import into your book cover file or place on the interior next to your copyright information. Again, you can create as many different versions of this EPS file as you want. If you want to adjust the color, depending on whatever the color is on your book cover, you can do that. Or again, the lazy man's way is to just change the color in this file, do a copy, and then paste it directly into your cover file and do that each time you want a different variation. There you have it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found that useful. For more low-content publishing tips, you can check out my blog over at rachelharrisonsund.com. You can download my guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low-Content Book in Less Than a Day, by clicking on the link in the description below. And I've also got a link there if you would like to join my free Facebook group, Low-Content Profits. So I will see you in the next video, and take care. Bye!